Hello everyone, in this video we will learn about different techniques for managing free memory. We have already seen swapping, ready swap in and swap out means whenever a process is required to execute at that time the process is to be loaded into memory. Once the process is finished the process is sent back to hard disk means whenever your process is moved from hard disk to memory then it is known as swept in and whenever your process is moved from memory to hard disk then it is known as swept out so whenever a swept out will occur in our system at that time it creates a space or we can say free space or we can say hole in your memory so how the operating system will manage this free space in our system mainly there are two ways to keep the track of memory uses or we can say free memory in our system first one is memory management with bitmap and second one is memory management with linked list let us see both the techniques one by one so first technique is memory management with bitmap here the structure is like this this one is nothing but a memory and this one is nothing but a bitmap so in this technique your memory is divided into allocation unit means this memory is divided into small units that is first unit second unit third unit fourth unit fifth unit up to n unit and corresponding to each allocation unit there is a bit in bitmap means each and every unit is associated with a bit means this first bit that is 1 is associated with first unit this second bit is associated with second unit this one is associated with eighth unit again this one is associated with this one is ninth unit and up to n this one is up to 16 24 32 and up to n now here the value of bit is either 1 or 0 if the bit is 0 means if the unit is free if the unit is free means this unit is free so value of bit is 0 again here bit is 0 means this unit is free again this bit is 0 means this unit is free here all these values are 1 means these unit are occupied by some process again here these all the 8 units are associated with some process again these two is associated with some process again this one is free so these two are free the size of allocation unit is an important design issue the smaller the size larger the bitmap here the most critical thing is the size of unit if we keep the smaller size then the size of this bitmap will be huge or we can say it's large here the main problem is that whenever a process required a space in the memory then at that time your memory manager must have to search the continuous k consecutive 0 bits in that MIP. Suppose here in this case here there are 3 consecutive units are free here 2 consecutive units are free here 3 consecutive units are free suppose any process required five consecutive units then in this case we are not able to allocate space to that process because there isn't any continuous five units at a time because there is only three so we are not able to allocate three here there are only two consecutive units so we are not able to allocate two process because the process requires five consecutive blocks again here there are only three units free so we are not able to allocate to that process so in this case we are not able to allocate memory space to that process now searching a bitmap for a run of a given length is a slow operation so whenever a memory manager will search a free unit that is somewhat time consuming or slow process second one is memory management with a linked list here the structure is like this P then after 0 then after 5 again it's a pointer to next node again H that is whole P for process then after starting at this is 5 then after 3 now how this works let us see 
how the memory management with linked list works the another way to keep track of memory is to maintain a linked list of allocated as well as free memory segment where the segment either contains a process that is p or an empty hole between two process that is known as h now each entry in the list specifies a hole here h means hole or p that is process means either your unit is allocated to any process or that unit is free that means it's a hole the address at which it starts the length and the pointer to the next entry so this one is the starting address of your memory address and 5 is the length of that process means how many units are allocated to this process so if we consider this block then p tends for this block is allocated to any process starting from zero unit and five units are allocated to this process then after pointer to next node again here hole means here hole means these units are free now starting address is fifth because from zero to five blocks are allocated so here starting from fifth block from fifth block three blocks or three units are free again pointer to next node then after again it is allocated to some process starting from 8 because starting from 5 3 units are already free that is whole so start next one is starting from 8 6 units are already allocated to this process again pointed to next node again it is allocated to some another process 8 plus 6 that is 14 so it is 14 again 4 units are allocated to this process again node and continue up to here the segment list is kept sorted by an address here this list is kept sorted by address only now sorting this way has the advantage that when a process terminate or is swept out updating the list is st simply straightforward here we have keep all this list in sorted manner because if any process will terminate or complete its work then updating the list is easy a terminating process normally has two neighbor except when it is at the top or bottom of memory whenever a process is terminated then that process has two neighbor left hand side and right hand side except whenever your process is either on top or bottom of memory now we have already seen here that sorting this way has an advantage that when a process terminates or is swept out that updating the list is straightforward now let us see how it will update the list means whenever a process is terminated or swept out then how the list is updated by the system these are the different ways before x terminate and after x terminate now here a p and b first case is process a then after process p and process b these are the three different process now after terminating process p here this portion will become whole and both of these process are remains as it is so structure becomes like a as it is this one is whole means free space and this one is b as it is so here P is simply replaced by S that is whole or free space. Second one is suppose here is process A, process P and this one is already a whole or free space. Now if suppose process P is swept out or terminated then in such cases here this P is replaced by whole and both of these whole are merged. So here this entire space is becomes whole and S keeps as it is so here p is replaced by h that is whole and two whole these two whole becomes merged and a remains as it is same way left hand side whole process p and here right hand side process b if this process p terminates or swept out then this p is replaced by whole and is merged with this left hand side whole so it becomes like this and last one is both the side hole and in between there is only one process p if this process is finished or swept out then in this case this p is terminated by hole and all these three holes are merged into a single so in this way 
your list is maintained easily that's why this all the nodes are placed sorted order thank you very much